In 2010, Sherry Rowlish opened Peaceful Parlor, an eco-chic boutique on the picturesque Main Street of Geneva, Illinois. The store is now the go-to for locals looking for a custom blend of tea or an environmentally conscious gift. But she wants to expand her customer base. With hundreds of tourists expected to come into town for an annual festival, Sherry's hoping to convert visitors into repeat customers. So she called in retail strategists Rich Kaiser and Georgian Bender to help her get the store ready for the influx of new shoppers. Thank you for coming today. One of the challenges we've been facing is sometimes we'll still have people that come in and they make a little loop around and they walk right out the door. If you've got people who are walking in your store making a loop and walking out, they're not understanding what you sell. All of those things that make you different, we want to help make you stand out. Ready to get started? Let's get started. Let's do it. Let's Thanks. go. So Sherry, this area is really important. It's a key area and it needs to stay open. Okay. The first five feet, square feet, inside the front door of a store is really no man's land because anything you put there, people won't see until they're at least five feet in the store. That's where we stop. This space, this open space, allows them to slow down. Now we're gonna romance you. You're not giving people enough space to walk in and actually take in the breadth of the product that you have because by the time they hit their five feet in the door, they're almost hitting this table. What I'm seeing is it's almost like a tidal wave of merchandise more than it is a tide. And what I mean by that is when I saw those when I first walked in, I had no idea what they were, quite frankly. So creating a way to not show so much, but tell stories and make sure there's a sign that explains it. From that display, I wouldn't understand that these are headbands. We also need to do some different levels. Okay. If we're going to show this many, many bright colors and, and groupings of colors, we need to make sure that they're separated enough so that the customer understands that this, this is not just this full. What is in the back in these rooms? Okay, um, right there we have our kids' room, and then over there we have some housewares. Question, how do I know that? I've never been here before. Well, a lot of times we're interacting with the folks, we're greeting them, saying hello, and be sure to check out our kids' room or step back into the other areas. We need to talk about signing for the entire store because you can't be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Signing is critical for customers. Women rely on it, men depend on it. Okay. And especially in a store like yours, you have so many unique items and mm -hmm. stories to tell about products. Mm -hmm. You need to tell people that this is what this is, this is where we are constantly as we go through the store. Don't use all capital letters. You want upper and lower case because mm -hmm. it's harder for older eyes to be able to read uppercase letters. You need to take the average age of your oldest customer okay. and divide it in half. That's the smallest size font you can use in any of your store signs. Oh, wow. The prime item that draws people into the store or that you're known for yes. is teas. Well, one of the things that we do here that's a little different is we, we hand blend the teas. We have a little working station back here, so it kind of fits to have the tea back here as far as logistics for us to move things and package things. Yeah. Logistically, it makes sense, but could we maybe bring some of the teas to the front of the store? So there's a major location and minor locations, and we need to make sure we're utilizing minor locations outside of this area. So that people showing know. Showing the major item from yep. the store. With a laundry list of changes to make, Georgian and Rich got to work getting the store ready for the first day of the festival. And the next day was the big reveal. All right, so we made a couple changes. It looks fantastic. So we gave you the five feet of space here so that people have a chance to walk into the store and they have a little bit more, more room to shop. We took your table that had the toys underneath, brought this one on top of it, combined the two, so now you've got multi-level. It's, it's easier to shop for people to see. We've crossed merchandise still, mm -hmm. but you know, it's easy to understand now this is a flowered headband. Now it's time to put the changes to the test. All right, so what did we learn today? Mm -hmm. We learned that when customers walk in the front door because we gave them that extra space, they felt more comfortable shopping. Not only did we see that, but we watched everybody go with the flow. In other words, we created this path and they came to the right, looked at the focal wall, mm -hmm. and instead of seeing just the radiator, they saw a product and they were handling it, they were yeah. talking about it, and on top of that, they looked at the tea, and they all started talking about the tea and that was driving them further into the store. And the third thing that they said Wow, she's got a lot of jewelry in here. I didn't know she had that much jewelry. We actually took jewelry away from this space 
but because of the way it's merchandised, they thought that you had more. So less in the display is more.